morning. I am Amy Mackay and thank you for joining us for today's TKG virtual event. Huge apologies to everybody who's been waiting. We did have some tech issues, but hopefully they're all resolved now. You can hear us, you can see us, and you'll be glad to know that we use the time appropriately and Kwame's been shoe shopping. So it's all good. Um, I am the National Coordinator of the Carnegie and Greenway Medal. And as many of you will be aware, the 2021 CKG shortlist were announced this morning, marking the start of another exciting shadowing season. So we thought, who better to celebrate the moment with than the author of last year's Green Away Shadowers Choice Award, Kwame Alexander. There he is. Kwame is a prize-winning poet, an author. His first novel won the crossover, won the 2015 Newbury Medal. He's been shortlisted for the Carnegie Medal. He's a best-selling author. Loads of awards, honours, and he's also a really, really nice bloke who I know you were going to love. So we're going to kick off for me with last year in their droves, shadowers fell in love with and they were inspired and voted for the undefeated. Could you tell us a little bit about that book, maybe for the shadowers who aren't aware of it, who are just joining us and tell us what it is about the undefeated that captures the hearts and minds of so many readers? Well, I mean, I wrote it as a poem for my daughter to explain to her the history of how Black people, how African people were captured and taken from their native lands, brought to America, enslaved. And 400 years later, one of the descendants of those Africans became the president of the United States, Barack Obama. I wanted to show that journey in a poem, in like 300, 200 words or less. So it's a love letter to, to Black America. It's a letter to America. It's a testimony to the world about the tragedy and the triumph. And so that, that was why I wrote it. That was what I was trying to do. The fact that it has resonated in the hearts and minds of kids and, and parents and teachers and librarians. I'm just honored and blessed that it did. I love that. I love that, the idea of it being a love letter, because it is. And as someone who's seen you read it live and seen students come to this book, it is a book that people fall in love with, but it really does resonate. So if we do have any young people out there that haven't looked at this book yet, then you absolutely, as soon as we shut up talking, you need to get yourself to your school library and you need to find this book because it's incredible. Now, as well as winning last year's Shadowist Choice Award, Kwame has won pretty much, well, you've won pretty much every award out there, haven't you? There's yeah, award I have won it. I have not won every award. I haven't won a BAFTA. Okay. Can we all see that sense of bitterness in there that he's not won a BAFTA yet? I guess I need to be, uh, first I need to be on the screen. Uh-huh. Yeah, is that where we're heading? My, my day is coming. Okay. Yeah. Believe that my day is coming. I started writing, Amy, so that I could have stuff to perform on stage. That was my, <laughs> that was my whole purpose in writing. Like I didn't set out to be a writer. I set out to be an actor and a performer. But none of the plays I was auditioning for were casting me. Uh -huh. And so I said, well, I'm going to not be frustrated. I'm just going to write plays for myself. So I started writing plays. For me to star in, I started writing more poems, and that's really where it began. So I want to be on the stage. If anybody's listening, put me on the stage or the screen. Well, not the stage right now because of lockdown, but the screen. On the screen. Right. Okay. I love that. I never knew that about you. So is that true that you started writing so you'd have something to perform? Yeah. First oh play God. I wrote was in. I was uh, I was in college. I was it was in my second year of university. So yeah, that was my, so I love performing as much as I love writing. Yeah. Those are, I love them the same. Right, okay. So I mean, with the writing, because you're doing the verse novels and that, I mean, that is a lot, you know, it's quite an isolated writer's life. So how does that, to the person who likes to be on the stage and likes to have an audience, how do you cope with that sort of quiet, isolated life? It's not quiet. No? It's not quiet <laughs> at all. 
Number one, you can't see it. I'm in my studio. I got huge solo speakers. So I'm blasting jazz music when I'm writing. Right. All right. When I'm rewriting, I'm blasting hip hop music. Um, I'm moving around. When the world was open, I like to go down and write in tea houses and coffee houses and cafes. And there's a place in Maida Vale called Raul's where I sit outside every morning and I would write because I want to be around people. Uh -huh. So for me, writing is an extension of the stage because I'm also, when I'm writing, I'm saying it out loud. So I'm hearing myself and how it sounds. So and do I'm, you actually write like out loud as you're writing, you're speaking out loud and hey, okay. Absolutely. That's what yeah. I do. You know, I try to make the words come alive for me because I want them to come alive for you when you read it. Uh-huh. So that's the secret, reading them alive. Okay. Yeah. And do you do that with all your writing? I do it with all of my writing. Right, I, okay. I, I've, told, I've told you my secret. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have told you my secret. There you go. Look at that. We are getting proper treated with secrets today. Honestly, shoe shopping and secrets. What more could I want? Honestly. Um, so is that so that's what attracts you to the for, to the format, the verse novel in particular, maybe, then that it's something that you can perform. Is that right? Well, the, the verse, I started writing verse because of my mom. She read to me a lot of poetry as a kid. Okay. So I just I grew up around poetry. I grew up reading it, it being read to me. I just grew up loving it. It was the way I learned how to communicate, how to speak and how to listen, how to read and how to write. So it was just, it, poetry is a part of me. I didn't set out to write poetry. Poetry just set out to let me write it. And that okay. was because of being immersed in it from a very early age. But I love the way it allows you to say a lot in very few words. Like, I love the rhythm of it. I love the rhyme of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's something that as, as a, I'm a school librarian. So I know for me, for young people who, you know, maybe don't consider themselves readers or anything, your verse novels are amazing because there's a lot of white space. I mean, you know, you can flip through them and there's an awful, I don't actually know if you guys can see that, but the lighting in here is not great. There's an awful lot of white space, which is great. There's less words, but you're still giving us that full narrative flow. Well, why do you think, Amy, the white space is there? Uh, come on, I'm not here to answer the questions. That's your job. I'm just asking them. I'm turning it around on you. <laughs> why is the white space there? Why, well, I think it's so that we can be active readers. It's so that you can bring your own emotions to the stories. I know when I read your book, that's what happens. I mean, I'm still reading, you know, reading crossover. You broke my heart. Oh, yeah. It broke my heart, too. Yeah. Really. But then hopefully, hopefully when you read Rebound, your heart got put back together. Marginally, yeah. I'll let you <laughs> off to a point. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. I right. know. Yeah. Right. But what would you say then? Because I know we're going to have young people who sat watching along and they're thinking, yeah, but I hate poetry. Oh, that's not for me. And I'll be honest, 10 years or so, that was me. I think poetry is something, it can be quite a scary prospect. So what would you say to those people who think that they don't like poetry and that these books aren't for them? Kick so hot his feet glow. Move so cold you see snow. Tall as a cypress tree, bro. Game so lit makes seeds grow. In your face 3D show. Game so deep it's below. Watch me fly from the free throw. Superman is sweet, yo, but Amy is my hero. <laughs> Boom! That's what I would say. I would say just share some poetry that's interesting, that's accessible, that's cool. That's it. You don't have to explain or tell people why they should like poetry. Just show them some poetry. I love that. Maybe that's one of the problems, that idea that you don't have to explain it. You can just enjoy it. Because that's how I've come to it, reading your work, because I enjoy it. You don't have to, it doesn't all have to be serious all the time. It can say something to you without needing to be dissected. You don't have to. You just have to let it seep in. You yeah. just have to let it be. It, poetry has the capacity to teach and inspire and entertain and engage and inform us all at the same time. It, it will do the work by itself. You just have to expose young people 
to that kind of poetry that's going to relate to them. Yeah. Absolutely. Excellent. Talking about that exposure, one of the things that I've always said, I mean, I've just said, you know, I adored crossover, but I'll be honest, when it was a friend I was working with at the time, she was like, oh my God, you have to read this book. And I looked at it. And for those of us who aren't familiar with crossover, here's the front cover, right? No one is going to be surprised looking at me that I'm not a massive fan of basketball. I'm really not, you know. But your books transcend the subject almost because it's the writing style. But at the same time, as a school librarian, the subject can be the great hook. Is that something that you do deliberately or does it just happen? I mean, Amy, I'm a genius. All right. Okay. Sorry. My mistake. So, again, it's all by design. Nothing is happenstance. There are no accidents. I set out to write a book that's going to entertain you and make you turn the page and make you forget that you are reading poetry. You're going to forget yeah. it just into the story. And number two, it's a little misleading. It's not a book about basketball. No, no, it's not. It's book not. About people. So it's about life. Eventually, you will figure that out and you'll just get into the story and the characters. And that's, I'm trying to tell stories about family and friendship and crushes and trying and coming of age and trying to find out who you are in this world. That's ultimately what I'm trying to do in all of my books. I happen to use sports and music as metaphors to get to that point. Love it. Thank you. Now, you just said there, that everything, there's always a plan. And I kind of believe that with you more than anyone, I don't believe that you do anything unthinkingly. I think you are always a man with a plan. You always know what you're doing and you're always looking 10 steps ahead. Is that about fair? Well, eventually, like sometimes, yeah. sometimes I have no idea what I'm doing. But even if I just stick to it, eventually I'll figure out where I'm headed. Yeah. But yeah, even yeah, most of the time, I mean, I, I get to that point where I know exactly where I'm headed. Yeah. So that leads me to the question. I'm really, really interested because you've collaborated with loads of people now, some really, really impressive names. We've got James Patterson, uh, Kadir Nelson, obviously, with the undefeated, Ty Neve, Randy Preston, you do a lot of work with. How does how do you approach those collaborations? Is there a challenge in the partnership? I love it. Again, I love being around people. I don't view writing as a solitary thing. I view it as a community. And so any chance I get to, to bounce ideas off of someone else or, um, or to get feedback from other writers or to brainstorm ideas and thoughts with other writers, I find that fascinating and so inspiring for me. I don't know everything. I'm a genius. But I'm a genius who's still learning. That's why I'm a genius. And uh -huh. what better way to learn than by surrounding yourself with other people who are smart or smarter than you are, who are as creative or more creative than you are. I want to get better. I want to be more inspired. I want to be smarter. So I love collaborating with people. And all the people I collaborate with are way smarter than me. Like that would be, that's the smart thing to do. It makes me look good, you know? So, you know, I've just been honored. And I think some of the best ideas have come from that kind of collaboration. So, so I really enjoy it. Yeah, I can imagine. What's it like? So particularly maybe for the books that have been illustrated. So The Undefeated. And again, I'm not sure how much people are going to see, but I mean, the illustrations and the artwork on this book they really are outstanding, absolutely stunning. What's it like when you see your work brought to life visually by someone else? How does that feel? It feels great, especially someone of Kadir's sort of, you know, talent and genius and status. You know, it's, it's, it's an honor and a blessing and it's humbling, you know, and it's, it's, it's the idea of ekphrasis. It's taking one piece of art and being inspired by it and creating another piece of art. And, and when I see that happening with my work, it's like, whoa, words are powerful. They can really like transform us. And I think that's sort of an, an example, um, an illustration as it were, of that process of, of, of words inspiring us. Um, the Undefeated is, 
is a masterful, you know, work of art. Like what yeah. Kabir did with that book. And as you said, he won the, the, the Kate Greenway Shadowing Award. So thank you students out there. I appreciate it. Kadir appreciates it. Um, the book also won the Caldecott Medal, which is um, an award for the most distinguished children's picture book. Uh, and it's awarded to illustrators in America. So he won that medal and he won the Coretta Scott King Illustrator Award. And so many awards that his art one and it's just, it's pretty magnificent. So I'm just honored to be a part of the process. Yeah, yeah, it is. What was the process of that like? So did you send the poem and he came up with the illustrations or was it uh, more of a joint partnership? How did that actually work with Kader? Um, we, we sent him the poem and then he did some sketches and he sent his sketches to my editor and my editor sent the sketches to me and I loved all of them except one sketch. Okay. And I sent him a note saying, I think you ought to consider changing this sketch. And he sent me a note back and he said, dear Kwame, I didn't tell you what to do with your poem. <laughs> <laughs> so leave me alone. <laughs> right? How cool is that? <laughs> Basically like, shut up Kwame. And it, but it's fun. It's funny because it worked out. Like he ended up, he was right. So that was what it was like. So we get a big laugh about that now. But it was yeah. in, the moment, in the moment, it was a little tense. Did you know each other beforehand? We'd seen each other. Right. At a couple of different conferences, but we were in no way friends. Right. Um, like we are now. Right. Okay. Uh, which sketch was it? Are you going to tell us? I think the same thing happened with this book. Right, okay. Becoming Muhammad Ali. Um, James Patterson and I wrote that together. He wrote a chapter, I wrote a chapter. He wrote a chapter, I wrote a chapter. So one chapter he sent me, I think it was chapter four. And I sent him a note back saying, you should make some changes here. You should change this, change that, change this, change that. Now, Amy, James Patterson is the world's best-selling author author uh -huh. in the world in the world the big world yeah world hundreds of mil for the past 10 years he's been the best-selling author so yeah. I, I sent him that note and a lot of my friends were like dude you can't send James Patterson that note but I sent it to him and he sent me a note back that was very similar to Kadir's note he said dear Kwame I would never begin to tell you what to do with your your poetry Love a uh, sincerely, Jim. But then he made the change. You know, so, so. I, I, I get a chance to work with some geniuses. I'm telling you, Amy, it's just it's it's a wonderful experience, and I, I learn a lot. But I'm not I'm also going to, you know, say what I need to say. Because yeah. I I believe there's this wonderful quote: I am the greatest not because I am better than anyone, but because no one is better than me. So whether you're an award-winning illustrator or you're the world's best-selling author, that's all great, but my words, my ideas, my thoughts still matter, and I'm gonna share them with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, backtracking a little bit there though, are you gonna tell us which sketch it was in The Undefeated? I am not. Oh, are you going to tell me afterwards when we start recording this? I am not. <laughs> <laughs> Can't blame me for trying. Um, on the same line, just before we move on, tell us a little bit about the graphic novel to crossover because, as I mentioned, crossover annual verse novels are great for hooking people who maybe don't consider themselves readers. And then you took it to the next level and we got this amazing graphic novel. Can you tell us a little bit about the process of how that came into life? I had nothing to do with it. Oh, okay. Nothing. Right. You know, Dawood Anyabwile is the, is the artist. And uh -huh. he, he took the book and he just made it into a graphic novel. I, I may have changed a few things or added a poem. I may have added one poem to it, but no, it's the same book. So shout out to Anderson Press for publishing my books and doing a beautiful job. Beautiful. 
Yes. So yeah, I had nothing to do with it, but I'm glad it's out because a lot more young people got exposed to the crossover through the graphic novel version. Yeah. And in January, there's going to be a graphic novel version of Booked. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Captain Anderson as well? I hope so. Hey, okay. Paul, Paul, are y'all publishing Booked? If they aren't, you should be students. Everybody send an email to Paul Black at Anderson <laughs> Press. We <laughs> want Booked. We want book. Oh, yeah. yeah. Booked comes out in uh, January. Fantastic. And is that the same artist? Same artist. Yes. Right. And I've seen I've seen the book. It looks amazing. It's it's even better than the crossover graphic novel. It's it's stunning. And and you can really see this young footballer. He's like jumping off the page. Yeah. Yeah. I love the graphic. I mean, I love this one. I really do. Thank you. Um, I mean, we've touched on quite a lot there, and I'm aware that we are running out of time and that we're running over anyway. So uh, one or two more questions. Um, we've touched on a lot of your different types of books. We've got the poetry, we've got the verse novels, you've done picture books, there's been self-help style inspirational books. I think I know the answer to this already, but is there anything that you wouldn't try? Uh, yeah. What? So there is something I, I'm going to try. I'm going to try uh, writing a memoir. Really? I, I want to write about my writerly life. I feel like it's been real interesting and, you know, with all the travel, with all the writers, with all the, the drama, which, with all the family, just, just trying to, it's not a rags to riches story, but it's a, it's a, it's a figure out over how, how to be a, it's how I became a 26 year overnight success <laughs> right it's about the work and the woes and the wonders and the letdowns and the challenges I want to write a memoir I think okay. yeah I want to write a memoir and I, I think I know where it starts it starts in 2018 when my mother passed away and then it goes back and jumps forward and keep, but that's sort of the frame because that was such a defining moment in my life so I think I'm, I think I want to do a memoir. Okay. What format would that take? Would that be in verse? It would be hybrid. It would be prose and verse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be a mixture. Okay. Can we yeah. have some photos in there? Because I love a memoir with photos. Got to have some photos. I got some cool photos. You see, I'm a huge photo person. Yeah. I got photos on this other wall of me and all my writerly friends, okay. like Sarah Crossan, James Patterson, Jacqueline Woodson, Jason Reynolds. So I want to have photos in there. I think so. Right. Black and white. Baby, photo, baby photos of Kwame. Oh, We're going to get those real embarrassing ones out. Hey, hold on one second. Oh. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Waiting. It's coming. I'm just putting all the photos on the wall now. I hope everyone else is too. It's coming, sister. Okay, here we go. Here we go. What, what we got? Are you ready? Yeah, we're ready. All right, so this was a picture. I was a tennis player. This is my first tennis lesson with my mom. And that was in Virginia, and I was about nine or ten. Uh huh. And this, the socks. and this is probably the most beautiful baby you've ever seen. Come on. Oh, look at that. That's me. <laughs> so, yeah, I think there should be pictures, Amy, right? Yeah, definitely. We need pictures in there. All oh. those photos. I can do that. Yeah, okay, good. Right. We have about two minutes left. So, you just mentioned about the cre creativity. And that last question for you I have is, We've just been through this big lockdown and all the students watching, they are probably in either their first, if not second, full week back at school. What's got you through the lockdown creatively? You like being on the stage and we've not been able to do that. What, how have the arts helped you? Uh, what's got me it. back? I think the things that have kept me sane are, are walking mm -hmm. and, and reading and Disney Plus. And this is lost, okay. Okay, yeah. What have you been reading? What have I been reading? 
I've been reading a lot about ships and swimming because my, okay. next, book, my next book has a lot of ships and swimming in it. Okay, um, I have no fit research. I also have been reading a lot of novels, you know, and I listen to a lot of audio books when I'm walking. So I find that interesting. Podcasts, yeah, that's basically what I've done. Yeah, that's it. Well, it's the arts that have kept us all sane in the last 12 months. Say again? It's the arts that have kept us all sane in the last 12 months. It's, you know, all you creative types that have kept us going. Where would we be without you? Exactly. Yeah. Well, we are out of time there. I know we've overrun. Thank you so much, everyone, for bearing with us through the tech issues. Kwame, as your hat says, you are an absolute icon. It's always lovely to talk to you. We're so grateful for your time. And we can't wait to hear what comes next. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, librarians. Thank you, teachers. Thank you, students. Thanks, everyone, for just helping make the world a better place one word at a time. We can do this together. Keep reading, do the right thing, be kind, don't be racist. Love, love, love. Have a great day. Woo! Thanks, guys. Bye.